KETV Newswatch 7, chronicling the stories impacting our community. Stories making a difference. Stories that matter to you. This is KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. People in the community might not see the value of people with disabilities, but I can tell you from my experience, gifts that they bring to us make our lives richer and fuller, and Amanda is a perfect example of that. A message of understanding and acceptance for those with disabilities like Amanda Coker. You saw her at the beginning there, touching people around the country through music. Advocates everywhere say there are resources and opportunities for everyone in our community. Connecting with that help, an issue for many families. Good morning, I'm Brandi Peterson, and welcome to KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. This morning, we're taking a closer look at groups right here in the metro offering opportunities for those with special needs and their families. First, let's look at education. Some of the latest reports show 13% of all public school students get some sort of special education. That's nearly 6.5 million students. In 1975, Congress passed legislation to separate special needs students from their classmates. But just this month, a study by Kansas University shows evidence opposing that structure. The KU study suggests keeping students in the same classroom for the same general education curriculum is a good thing for everyone. And Jake Geringer is proof of that. As you're about to see, he is inspiring people far beyond the walls of Papua La Vista South High School. Jake Erringer takes a hands-on approach to just about everything. In the weight room, in the marching band, and in making friends at Papillion La Vista South High School. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a lot of friends here? Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you like to do with your friends? I have uh, yeah, friends and uh, yeah, uh, hang out and talk. This month, Jake's friends showed just how much he means to them. Dude. Yeah. Congrats on homecoming, hey, hey, dude. Hey, dance. You're, you're going to win it all, dude. Yeah. It's all you, baby. His fellow students elected Jake to homecoming court. Did it surprise you? Yes. It did surprise me, yeah. Yeah. And it made his mom, Denise, grateful. It means a lot. It means that um, down the road, um, Jacob will be seen in his community as a person who is employable, as a person who can be a part of things. And for yeah. anyone with a disability, walking in Jake's shoes, a message from one proud mom to yeah. others. I would tell them um, to trust the goodness of people, um, to trust your child to display their abilities. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, good. To tell them that we're really in a good world. There's uh, good people in a good world. And Jake's friends weren't just putting on a show for the camera. Check this out. Fall of 2013, his fellow students voted him homecoming king. All hail King Jake. Love it. Our thanks to Papua La Vista South for sharing that video. And joining us now, Jake Geringer and his mom, Denise. Thank you guys so much for being here. And Jake, that was about a year ago. Do you uh, remember all of that? Uh, yes. What was it like standing on that field and being named king? Um, uh, uh, maybe my friends say it did to you, but me and me and I so uh, happy. Yeah. To, 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 to that. You have yeah. a lot of great friends. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. What are you doing now? Um, now uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, in class. I'm a uh, IUF. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Very cool. And Denise, to see that video again, to be there that night, do you remember the emotion you felt watching all that? You know, it was um, it, it was a, a wonderful um, finish to a great uh, school career, and the Papillion Lewis School District did a wonderful job of including him. He, he was in, involved with his typical peers from kindergarten until the day he left the school. And he is now working um, in their young adult transition program in the kindergarten at one of the local schools, um, training to be a pair, a pair professional. So. Do you like working with kids? Uh, yes. What's your favorite part? Uh, my uh, favorite part is, is the uh, art and the, the DPV kids to me that love that. That's great. Yeah. And Denise, when you hear that KU study, how important is it to you to integrate everybody, to keep everybody together in these classrooms? Oh, it's, it, it's very important because our society is an integrated society and everyone needs to learn to um, 
work with each each person's strengths and capitalize on each person's strengths, um, just like we all do. Um, we we look at our strengths and that's what we do to pursue our careers and to um, find our um, extracurricular activities. So. Um, people with disabilities are just like everyone else. They have the same wants and desires. And starting off with your peers in school um, really educates the um, peers as well as um, the student with disabilities that everyone has commonalities. And you're not only a mom, of course, that's your job number one. You also work with Ollie Webb. I do. What is Ollie for people who don't know? Ollie Webb is an umbrella agency um, that serves two organizations the Arc of Omaha and Career Solutions, Inc. Both nonprofits um, provide support and services for people with disabilities and help them achieve their full potential. So, Jake, what do you do at Ollie Webb? Uh, me, I do a study in class. I have a, a math and I have a working place stairs, mm -hmm. and I have a, a Spanish in the design levels. That's terrific. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that we talked about book club mm -hmm. before. What are some of the services and programs that Ollie offers that help guys like Jake thrive and you just bet. be better? You bet. Well, we have a number of different programs that span the lifespan of a person um, with disabilities from birth all the way to adulthood. We have our career solutions that um, has continuing education classes, um, supportive independent living, um, supported employment services. We have an art of imagination where we have a writer's workshop and our uh, people with disabilities act in the writer's workshop, uh, perform in a loudmouth uh, film festival. Um, we have um, a number of extra activities um, such as the Next Chapter Book Club, which is really a booming thing going on in the Omaha metro area. We have 12 clubs around the city wow. where people with intellectual disabilities meet once a week. Um, the focus is on community inclusion. Um, com uh, social connectedness, and then, of course, literacy. And that's been very popular. It's a, it's a, it's a great uh, way to hang out with friends once a week. Um, they're usually at a local coffee shop so they can get their mocha drink and um, enjoy some time with friends. Um, we have our adult services programs where we offer Best Buddies. We've we're partnered with Creighton, um, where we have college students paired up with young adults, and they do activities out in the community. We have our Just Friends program where we have teens that um, have peer mentors in the community. Um, we have our Sib Shop, so we support our siblings of, of uh, family members with special needs. We have our Family Services program where we have parent-to-parent -parent activities, matching parents up with another parent, um, sharing and supporting each other um, with common um, situations in their lives. Um, we have a number of activities for families to attend along um, the parent-to-parent -parent line. Um, we have a day on the water where, where we kayak. We have a fire safety day. We have an Easter egg hunt coming up. We have um, a number of different things where families can get together. Um, I'm missing something. What else do we have? We have our Ultimate Life program where our Ultimate Life companions um, pick up and take our Ultimate Life friends um, to uh, age-typical activities. They may go out dancing or to, out to dinner or anything that a young adult might do. Jake, what's your favorite? Uh, m uh, my, uh, my favorite, uh, I'm going to uh, hang out with my friends. And, uh, and, uh, enjoy. And, uh, so how important is it, Denise, to keep finding those friends, to find volunteers who are willing to hang out and just be friends with other people? You bet. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how willing people, maybe you would be surprised. We have a number of willing people in our community who, who like to give of their time and like to mentor. Um, our Next Chapter Book Clubs have two to three volunteer facilitators at each group. Um, they really create a bond with the, with the other club members and enjoy their company just finding out that they have similar things in common. Our best buddies, we have Creighton students that are always willing to, to pair up with um, our friends with disabilities. Um, we've got volunteers that come in and help us with our large group events. Um, we have a tween scene program that volunteers right. come into, help our tweens cook. Um, we do um, social skills. Um, and our volunteers are crucial. They really are our um, connection to the community um, because we've got people from all over, from all different circumstances coming in and sharing their time with our with our friends with disabilities, um, assisting them in modeling social skills and um, helping them really be a part of their world. And Ollie Webb, just contact on the web if a family is watching this and wants to get involved. You bet. We do have our website, um, ollywebbinc.org, and it has um, all of our programs listed as well as um, some other information, um, advocacy, some of our legislative um, efforts as well. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in. Jake, best of luck to you. You're mm -hmm. going to do awesome in everything you do. Mm -hmm. King Jake, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, just ahead, another show of support for a local guy, this time on the basketball court. They've been that special. Harley is Ralston's MVP, and you're about to see why. He's teaching his teammates valuable lessons on and off the court. 
You're watching KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. Welcome back. You probably won't find any future NBA stars on Ralston's freshman boys basketball team. In fact, the A and the B teams combined record 2 and 20. But one of the best stories of their season is much bigger than basketball, teaching the team life lessons. KETV News Watch 7's Matt Lothrop has this incredible story. On the surface, they resemble any high school basketball squad. But these Ralston freshmen exemplify the concept of team as much as any. And it's all because of their inspirational leader. And so three. One, two, three. Everything you want in a teammate. He always wants to be the first one. He's been that special. Harley Kazina has loved basketball his entire life. In this his first year of playing, it took several practices before his coaches realized just how special number 41 is. Harley had uh, a problem catching the ball when the ball would come to him. And I thought, well, maybe he needs glasses. So I went up and, and talked to Michelle Crum, one of his teachers. And she said that he is autistic, which is the first that I ever knew. Harley has Asperger's syndrome, which falls in the autism spectrum. It's often characterized by difficulties with social interaction. That's not the case here. Not only is Harley the emotional leader of this team, he's one of the hardest workers in practice. Even though they probably have more talent than Harley does, you know, they still try because they see Harley trying the hardest he can every, every single day. Harley. Harley always gives 100%. That hard work and dedication eventually earned Harley action in a game. And with his physical and mental limitations, coaches had to get creative. I was trying to think of how I can get him involved in the game. Well, I just decided, you know what, at the beginning of every game, he's going to be our jump ball guy. I was a jump start, and I, and I got it. And I almost made my free shot. And then the other, and like the second game, I finally had a four points, and the third game, I made a three pointer. Teammates give encouraging guidance to Harley, all the while knowing his spot on the court affects their amount of playing time. Coach Mark Larson said his team's mature approach has allowed each player to see a bigger picture, one where high school freshmen learn life lessons more important than the numbers on a scoreboard. I still try to treat him the same as everybody else. I think that's one thing I learned. It's kind of cool to see. Like people overcome certain stuff. You can't complete a team without an actual team. You gotta share the ball and be a leader, and that's what Harley does. In Ralston, Matt Lothrop, KETV Newswatch 7 Sports. Harley's coaches say he improves each and every time they practice, and he tells his coach each and every game that his defense will make a difference. Well, joining us now is Catherine Maxwell from the organization called Mosaic. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you and for having me. First question, as I asked Denise, what is Mosaic for people who don't know? Mosaic is an organization that helps um, all folks with developmental disabilities to achieve a full and meaningful life, a meaningful life to them of what they want out of their lives, what they want to achieve, and what they want to do. And we kind of talked about Ollie Webb offers a spectrum, all ages. You guys offer that too, including to provide vocational training, job opportunities. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, that is actually the department that I'm in. It's called the Liberty Program here in Omaha. And we provide all training, including from the very beginning of learning how to look for a job, learning what type of job they want, what type of career they want, all the way to once they get a job, helping them to be successful in that job. What do you see? Here we had Harley, the gentleman, the little guy in the Ralston story we just talked to, who so badly wants to please his teammates and his coach and do a good job. Do you see that in, in the people that Mosaic works with? We do. We see that very much. Um, one of my folks, he just got a job. And to him, it's the greatest thing in the world because all he wants to do is go to work and help people and really make a difference in people's lives. What would you tell businesses who maybe have some trepidation about reaching out to someone with disabilities? Are they going to be a good fit? What would you tell them? I would tell them that you never know what our individuals are capable of doing um, with a little bit of encouragement and some training. And the help of their job coaches, we have people achieving great things every day and working in jobs that people never would have thought they could do before. Um, so that hesitation is there, but we are very much overcoming it, and that's why the job coaches are in place, is to help them be successful and do their job to the best of their ability. And they can really achieve some amazing things. Can businesses reach out to Mosaic and say, hey, we'd like to work with you and maybe bring someone in to our place? 
Yeah, they definitely can. We love it when businesses reach out to us and they are open to having us in their business. Um, it really makes the hiring experience much more enjoyable for the individuals involved and it really shows them that they are going to be welcome and not discriminated against in their new job. What are some of the other things that people do it at Mosaic? I know we talked about Amanda off the top of the show, voice of an angel. She's one of your clients there. What, what kinds of things does Amanda do? Oh gosh, Amanda actually goes out into the community and she reads to children and she loves it. She has her book that has Braille on the back and she has somebody who goes with her and shows the pictures to the children. And we also have people who go to the Humane Society and they volunteer walking dogs and washing the dogs. And we have people who help out at homeless shelters doing um, feeding or organizing clothes. They work at the food pantry. We have people who do all kinds of great things, not just for themselves, but also for our city. So for families who maybe know somebody who has a disability, a family member, if they're interested but they don't know, can they come do a tour with you? They can. We have the Discover the Possibilities tour, and our next one is coming up on March 11th, and we have two times. It's at 9 and at 11.30, and you can come in and you can see what it is that we do at Mosaic, and you can hear some of the success stories of people like Amanda. She is actually one of the folks who participates in that tour and tells people what she does. So it's really a great opportunity to come in and see what we do and see some of the people that we work with. How do you, for people who maybe don't have as much experience with someone with special needs, we heard off the top of the show the abilities, the things they bring to you just are so enriching. Yeah, um, it's really something that's becoming more and more seen throughout mm -hmm. our community where people are seeing just how capable and how amazing these individuals are. We have people who do amazing artwork. We have a young lady who just had an art show and she does all of her own paintings. She turns them into Christmas cards and things like that. We have people who go out and sing in the community. So lots of amazing talents and amazing abilities. We all have different abilities and things we can do. Definitely. So if, maybe not job training, if, they, if somebody just wants a place where they can hang out, find new friends, maybe just explore different crafts and things like that, Mosaic good for them as well? Yeah, we actually do provide different services. We have in-home supported services where they actually go into the home and they can do programs like activity programs mm -hmm. where they go out into the community and enjoy activities that they want to do and that they may not have a chance to do otherwise. We have different groups that go out to do arts and crafts and they are going out to movies, they go out bowling on Perfect. Wednesdays, lots and lots of great things. All kinds of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Catherine Maxwell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And stay with us. Our next guest is talking about an amazing opportunity for a young woman you might know. First, a reminder, your comments are an important part of this show. If you want to be heard, there are two ways you can do it. You can call us directly at 402-978-8960. Remember, please speak clearly. We may use your comments on the air and try to be brief if you can. To email your comments, just go to KETV.com and click on the Chronicle link. We do love to hear from you, and we'll be right back. Oh, Burr, who wants to go swimming in this frigid weather? Well, for a great cause, these folks do. They all took the challenge last weekend to be bold and get cold, plunging into Lake Cunningham for Special Olympics. And there are some terrific opportunities, like Special Olympics, for people with disabilities to showcase their abilities. The Miss Amazing pageant is another one. Every year, dozens of girls, teens, and women join together to showcase their talents. And beauty. Omaha's Jordan Summer organized the Miss Amazing pageant. What started, though, here in Nebraska has now gone national, taking place in states all over the country. Contestants get makeovers, get dressed up, and they are in the spotlight for a wonderful night. I'm very excited. My first year doing this, and I made amazing friends. Really, the whole uh, point of the Miss Amazing pageant is to build self esteem and confidence in these girls and to give them the feeling that they can do anything they want. They can accomplish anything they want to accomplish. And joining me now to talk about this incredible confidence boost for these young women is Brianne Cox, the director of Nebraska's Miss Amazing pageant. Watching those young ladies' smiles makes me smile. What is it like seeing it in person? It 
brings a good smile to your face, but honestly, it's for me, I find it really rewarding um, to sit there and watch it. And I can sit back. This year, being state director for the first year, I was more behind the scenes and I didn't get to interact with the girls as much um, as being a staff member. But being back there, every year I cry. Yeah. Um, their smiles and how happy they are just to be on the stage and get to showcase what they can do in their talents is really amazing. Sure. Amazing is the only word. And any girl or woman can, can relate to that. We want to feel beautiful and, and special. And what is it, why would you want to, why would these young women be, want to be a part of this pageant, I guess? What would you tell families who are hearing about it for the first time? Uh, Miss Amazing, it's a great organization to, once a year we have our pageant, get everyone together. Girls five and up can participate. There's no age limit. Um, and my favorite quote and one thing I always tell people is two years ago I was practicing interviews with one of the girls before she went in and she said to me when I come here I don't feel alone I'm with everyone that's like me and I'm not forgotten about and I am in the spotlight it's about me it's about us everything that we can do in our abilities and to me that's really the token um, oh, great. I had to step away at that point to <laughs> recollect myself sure. without bursting into tears in front of her. And what I love, there are so many different categories, different things are recognized. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, for Friday night, at least at Nebraska and also Iowa, we have our talent showcase. There's no limit on what you can do for your talent. We've had someone dance and throw out candy to a Halloween song, so all the way to gymnastics and twirling a baton. Or at nationals, we had a family, a dad dance with his daughter. Um, we had a few dad-daughter dances. And then that evening, Saturday evening at the final show, they do an interview beforehand. They do an onstage introduction. So they're learning those public speaking skills. And then they get to walk the stage in their gown and do an evening wear. And then at the end of the night, every girl receives a crown and a trophy, um, and they get their crowning moment in the spotlight just for them. I love it. And when we talked to Jordan many, many years ago, this was just Nebraska in its infancy, all over the country now. Yep. How many states? We're in about 35 states. Oh we goodness. are growing every month. Someone is interested in starting a new state. It's a little, it's a process they have to go through as a director, but we're getting and hoping in the next few years to be in all 50 states and also looking into bringing it overseas into different countries. Wow. And it's coming up. Girls can still sign up if they want to. Nebraska is, is over for this year. Okay. However, we're taking applications already for next year. Perfect. We don't have a set date. It's an October, November time frame, though. But Iowa, if you want to go see what it's all about, if you're from Nebraska, Iowa is March 27th and 28th at 7 p.m. at Iowa Western. So just right over. Right across the street. Yep, so if you want to go see what it's all about and bring your girls there to kind of get a view of what it is, that's the perfect opportunity. Wonderful. Brianne, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Well, we have posted more information on all of these organizations at KETV.com, and there are ways you can get your family involved as well by either participating or by volunteering. That does it for this week's episode of KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle. We hope to see you right back here next Sunday at 10 for an all-new episode. Have a great rest of your weekend.